up on board is Mette Dyerberg. She's the founder and CEO of MIMI. And MIMI has developed a digital approach to managing autoimmune diseases like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, or Crohn's. Uh, and it transforms the way autoimmunity is treated. Mete will be presenting Master Your Triggers, Apply Process Optimization to Your Own Body. Take it away. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Mete. I am from Legoland, also known as Denmark. Uh, I like to build things. This is, you know, I don't know, my fifth company. I sold my first company 20 years ago, so I guess I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, I am super excited about talking about applying process optimization to my own body. And I think at the end of the day, I think the surprising thing is that I decided to not go into the data and not have the slides, which is the, the typical thing to do, but really sort of take you through why is it possible to use process optimization to figure out healthcare issues at its root? and sort of take you through a, a journey that way. So as Lindsay mentioned, we um, have found a way to identifying triggers for autoimmune disease. And so fundamentally autoimmune disease has been seen as over a hundred different diseases based on where the body was getting attacked. We are fundamentally asking a different question, which is why? And when you ask that question, you're looking at the underlying mechanism for why your body is getting attacked. So if Stelia has had um, prostate cancer, had breast cancer, nobody would be in doubt that the underlying mechanism was cancer. But with autoimmunity, we've looked at the complexity instead of looking at how do the, what do these diseases have in common? And so me personally went on this journey, not because I wanted to build a company, but because I had a personal problem. I got my first autoimmune condition when I was 14, spent the first half of my 20s in and out of the ER with a loss of eyesight, you know, body limb functionality that, that didn't necessarily work optimally. And in my mid 20s, I became a cardiac patient. And with the blood thinners and cholesterol lowers, unfortunately also came a slew of additional autoimmune diagnoses. So by 27, I was unable to walk up a flight of stairs. And by 30, I had six diagnoses and was medicated heavily and was really setting out to be a chronic disease patient. And so in my mid thirties, I got a call that changed everything. Um, my doctor's team told me they had great news. And upon arriving at the hospital, they proceeded to tell me I wasn't gonna die in the quote unquote immediate future. Um, and then proceeded to tell me I wasn't going to die. And needless to say, that wasn't the highlight of my day. And at the time, I was so naive that I actually said, that's fine. What's the great news? And it got exceedingly awkward. And I've, I felt at the time that having, you know, my, my medicine cabinet started to look like a walk-in closet. And every time I saw a doctor, I get a new diagnosis. So the only question I posed was, what are we going to do about my process? And my doctor told me they were happy with my numbers. As an economist, that was completely unacceptable. And I decided to take matters into my own hands. Clearly at the time, my only benefit looking back was that I knew very little about healthcare. So I really turned to the one thing that I understood, which was process optimization. And I started small. I started journaling everything I did translated it into Excel spreadsheets, realizing that I actually needed metadata to understand what was going on. So kept adding more and more layers of data and built some homemade algorithms to look at the causality between what was going on and how I was feeling. And in five months, I proved I wasn't a cardiac patient and I had done weekly EKGs for eight years at the time. And so I thought I can probably get rid of all of it. And really through a very rigorous uh, turning my life into numbers process, I was able to, in 16 months, normalize my blood work, reverse all my disease symptoms, and I've been drug and symptom free for just short of a decade now. And so what in fact really happened was instead of looking at the complexity, 
I looked at the inputs and outputs. I really looked at my body as a closed circuit computer system that needed debugging. And biohacking and, and looking at how our bodies are working is not an unknown um, thing today, but it was something that wasn't really applied in the healthcare realm at the time. So when I really started thinking about building my me, it was really out of sort of this despair that others had to go through decades of being sick without having a system that really was able to do anything for them. Um, autoimmune patients typically spent five to seven years undiagnosed, similar to how I bumbled around in my early 20s. And um, then once they actually get a diagnosis, there's long wait lists and you have to get through um, metrotrexate, which is a chemo drug, to actually be qualifying for the specialty pharma medication that's available in the market. Worst of all is that three out of four fails on these medications. So 75% has no solution, even after going through years of, of you know, looking for a diagnosis and, and getting there. And so what we decided was, well, how if we could actually build a protocol that could optimize health? It's not just for autoimmunity, it could be used across a broad spectrum, but our specialty is autoimmunity because it's inflammatory. And what we, what we actually saw was confounding. It was not only possible to actually reverse autoimmune disease, but it was possible to see causality that go way beyond. And so one of the things that typically happens when people come to a company like Miami is they have hundred different rules. Every well-meaning doctor, including Dr. Google, have, have supplied ample advice. But what happens generally is that you intermittently cheat on all of it because you have no idea what actually works for you. So what we do is we take your body signaling. So really that sniffly nose when you're eating certain things, joint pain, stomach issues, and we turn that noise into understanding using computer power. So think of it as an app that is tailored to you. We not only tailor it to the specifics around who you are, but we tailor it to your specific language. So even though we clinically, you know, let's say you're an RA patient, we might be tracking mild, moderate, severe pain, but we actually figure out that for you, it means um, achy joints, mobility issues, um, I can't get out of bed. So that all you have to do is, is tap a topic and you're done. So it only takes a couple of minutes a day to, for the data feed into the machine. But what we can then do is we can actually then figure out what is the one or two things that is actually causing your immune system to go awry and attack itself. So you can almost think of this as replacing blood work with computational algorithms and machine power. We then take those machine insights and have human health coaches that have all reversed their own autoimmune disease implement the behavior changes. Because needless to say, in my own case, 20 years of disease, my main trigger is chicken. I could probably have figured that out. But for some people, it's eggs or dairy or something that they're eating all the time. And they actually need help figuring out how to navigate their life in a way that um, you know, becomes a sustainable change. And so we started out with these sort of benign patterns. And after the first thousand people through the program, we realized that not only could we reverse the inflammatory side of autoimmunity, but we actually got insights into how the human body worked in a way that we had never actually um, read about in, in medical literature. So to give you sort of a couple of examples of what that could be is we had a, um, one of the early investors uh, that came into the company um, wanted to take a look at his anxiety and panic attacks, but he also had esophagus closures, psoriasis. So he had a lot of symptomatics stuff that we could look at. And he really didn't, I think, expect his mental issues to be caused by <laughs> ailment. But what we saw after four weeks of tracking was that whenever he had an esophagus closure, he would 10.76 to 10.83 hours later. So a window short of 11 hours after an esophagus closure, he would have a panic attack. And it didn't matter whether it was day or night when he had his esophagus closures, he would wake up in the middle of the night with a panic attack. 
So now we knew that his mental issues were actually triggered by something physical. And we could turn all of our attention to figuring out what was triggering this physical ailment. In his case, it was a histamine intolerance. We changed his diet to not include histamine inducers. And within a couple of weeks, all of his physical ailments were gone and the same with his mental issues. So the gut brain balance was something that actually was one of the, the most enriching insights that we saw early on. What we also learned was that as you're going through this process optimization as a, as a human, you actually get to understand yourself at a deeper layer. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of people sort of had indications or inclinations that, hey, dairy might not be the right thing for me. But when they started actually tracking what they were doing, they would say things to their coach like, you know what, being symptom-free with Miami is amazing and I can cheat and get away with it. And the coach would say, hmm, what do you mean by get away with it? And somebody would say, well, I had ice cream yesterday and look at my hands, I can actually you know, open and close them, which is something a lot of arthritic patients are struggling with. And we could dip into the data and say, well, actually, you haven't seen the cost of that ice cream yet, because according to our data, you don't have any bowel movements for 68 hours following ice cream. And then, you know, there's an additional lack. So on Monday between two and three, you should probably have your hands clam up. And, you know, a couple of days later, when the prophecy of the data comes through, the penny drops. All of a sudden, it becomes very clear to the individual what keeps them out of the wheelchair, what keeps them active with their kids. And so if you can eat your way in, you can also eat your way out. And the reason I'm talking about eating and, and nutrition is because 82% of this is dietary. So we see the majority of triggers being, you know, the, the histamine intolerance, nightshades, uh, whatever the different inducers are, cruciferous vegetables, things that people actually, when they hear it the first time, don't even know what is. And I can tell you people who've been sick for years and get told broccoli and cauliflower is out, it's very relieved because it means they can still drink red wine, right? So I think a lot of times we get very nervous around the things that we appreciate the most, but we have more people that are allergic to kale than hamburgers. And so it really comes down to understanding how the body works. And I think we've fundamentally as a society started to look at the body in segmented parts. Our specialist doctor system means that an autoimmune patient who's displaying brain fog, stomach issues, knee pain, they get three specialist referrals. But now you've just taken sort of the process problem and broken it into three pieces. And so what's important is actually to look at how does all of these inter things intercorrelate? Um, I typically say, we can see in our data that if you had your appendix taken out, you have an 85% higher risk of being our client or being an autoimmune patient down the road. And Appendixes was sort of one of those things that at least when I was growing up, oh, you don't need it. But today, what we know about the microbiome and the importance of the microbiome, you almost have to think of the appendix as sort of the pantry of the microbiome. That's where you can go and put a little bit aside or take a little bit. So not having your appendix is like having a house in Florida with no thermostat. It's either going to be hot or cold. So when we are talking about applying process optimizations, it's really understanding down to this very deep level, what is actually going on in your body. Um, I think one of the important things coming into this from my perspective was really not to be deterred by sort of the lack of industry knowledge. I was unconstrained by sort of existing known uh, solutions. I'm an economist, I'm not a doctor. Um, and by approaching my personal health from this perspective of process optimization and operations management, you know, think like Deming or Toyota, I was able to apply an individualized approach to identify these triggers. And today we can apply that to a lot of N of ones and, and gain insights from across many individuals. But really personalized medicines is, is where I think the world is heading broadly. But I think what my point is from an entrepreneurial perspective is that 
sometimes the best ideas really come from analogous fields. It, it might take a new approach to solve a problem that has yet to be solved. And I think a lot of times when, especially in this arena, we, we turn um, our life into numbers and apply sort of this optimization process. But what took me 16 months years ago, we can now do in 16 weeks. And we see that 79% of the population going through Miami get a great improvement within eight weeks. And so we're talking about diseases that takes five to seven years to get diagnosed. But if you can actually reverse the disease symptoms in weeks or months, then we have fundamentally failed as a system. And I think from my perspective, we started out solving, you know, in my case, the end of one, then many end of ones. And now we are really on a quest to, to change healthcare. We want to be a standard of care. We want to be able to get to a place where autoimmunity, similarly to cardiovascular disease, has a preventative element. If you are coming to the doctor with cardiac disease today, nobody would be even surprised that there was a dietary element. But when it comes to rheumatology, we've not gained enough momentum to actually introduce preventative rheumatology. Instead, we lead sort of patients down this path of waiting for many, many years, and in some cases, decades, to get diagnosed and get treatment that might not even have a, a, a big impact. So to sort of um, go back to so like, why, why me? You know, I've built companies in many different arenas, always disruptive, but never in healthcare. And actually, to be quite frank, um, I don't hope for anybody to help end in healthcare. I think as an entrepreneur, it's quite hard to, to deal with the FDA and all the regulatory pathways and HIPAA and so on. But that being said, um, I think the reason it was me was because I've always looked at the world in patterns. Um, a couple of years ago, I came home to my dad and my nephew, who's literally a, a carbon copy of me, was doing a puzzle on the floor, but he was doing it with the backside up. And I said to him, Lawes is his name, if you turn the puzzle pieces over, you can do the picture that's on the box. And he said, oh, I already did that side. And I was joking with my brother around it. And then my father walked by and he looked at, at the puzzle pieces being put together. And he said, huh, that's interesting. I haven't seen anyone do that since you met him. And I think everybody gets sort of put on their journeys. In my case, unfortunately, it meant 20 years of disease in order to get enough uh, insights to be able to sort of take back control of my own health. Um, but I'm very blessed to be able to help others do the same. And so I hope this sort of gave you a little bit of a teaser to how do we use uh, data to gain insights and actually improve health and optimize um, people's well-being by mastering their triggers. So thank you, everyone. I do not have a fancy slide, but my name is Meta, M-E-T-T-E. And it's meta at mymy.com. You're more than welcome to reach out or check us out or refer us to friends and family. And uh, it was exciting to get to share with you guys what we've been working on. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that fantastic talk today, Meta. Um, I love how you uh, infused both qualitative and quantitative uh, work in what you do. So thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for having me.